Welcome, and thanks for joining us for this deep dive look at Dynamics 365 for Retail. We are excited to share with you what we see happening in the retail landscape, and how Microsoft is helping retailers meet the extraordinary challenges and opportunities facing them today. And then we'll show you some of the advanced capabilities and benefits you'll find in the Dynamics 365 for Retail solution. Pressures on retailers are growing. First, of course, we're seeing an unbelievable transformation in the retail space right now. Businesses are needing to redefine, and in some cases, completely overhaul their strategies to deliver solutions that cover the end-to-end -end aspects of omnichannel commerce and smart logistics, and meet the growing demands of consumers who want compelling, consistent, personalized experiences. We know you're facing multiple pressures to evolve existing business models, and you're operating in a global marketplace that's characterized by disruptive technological innovations and fierce competition for wallet share, and all the while you're facing a number of challenges and disruptions. Retail employers must accommodate a diverse workforce with easy-to-use tools and development opportunities, but at the same time, we must attract millennials with mobile, social, and cloud technologies. You know, millennials represent over 25% of the population, and they're an enormous opportunity in retail. And although they're the first generation born into a truly digital society, where online sales now dominate, interestingly, millennials spend most of their retail dollars at brick-and-mortar stores. Many retailers face inventory optimization challenges, such as high inventory storage costs, inability to fill orders on time, significant margin loss on markdowns, inefficient fulfillment processes, and no visibility into inventory levels across channels. They're using a variety of tools to address these challenges, but because the tools aren't integrated with supply chain or ERP, these retailers are missing out on agility and information visibility, so they're operating at a competitive disadvantage. Many consumer goods companies are finding new revenue streams by attempting to create brand loyalty through a personal relationship with consumers, rather than relying on the traditional retail channel. The critical challenge for these brands is to create the right engagement experience for consumers at scale, and then to harness the signals from that engagement to learn, improve, and optimize. Millennials are interested in experiential environments and choice, and they show less loyalty than any previous generation. They want to feel valued as customers. Their feedback, for good or ill, is posted swiftly on brands or third-party social networks. So how will retailers keep these inconstant customers engaged and feeling positive about their brands? We really need to nail that experience to maximize lifetime customer engagement and value. Today's consumer has information at their fingertips 24-7, 365. The empowered consumer can try, buy, and return at will, and does, and can change brands and choices when, where, and however she likes. For retailers, the message is clear. Give consumers what they want, when they want it, or risk losing them. And today's retailers must integrate a range of touch points, such as the store, online, mobile, catalog, social sites, into a seamless shopping experience. Increasingly, a retailer's success is directly tied to their ability to provide relevant, accurate product information across all these channels and to manage that data efficiently with unified inventory and supply chain logistics and analytics. At Microsoft, we're constantly looking at ways we can remove the complexity connected to these challenges. We understand that you need tools to help your business thrive in this fast-paced industry, as well as the technology to stay at the cutting edge as you work to deliver best products and customer experiences possible. So success in this environment requires a new approach. That's a lot to manage. Talk about a need for digital transformation. Well, at Microsoft, we're committed to enabling that journey for our customers. We help retailers deliver exceptional retail experiences that elevate their brand by offering seamless shopping experiences through unified digital, in-store, and back office operations. We do this in three ways. First, by optimizing retail operations with a trusted, secure platform that enables data-driven business insights and provides a foundation to better manage inventory, orders, and fulfillment. Second, by empowering employees to provide outstanding service at every point along the buyer journey with role-optimized solutions and integrated data that deliver the guidance necessary to accomplish these key business goals. And third, by creating a personalized retail experience that elevates their brand and ignites buying behavior using immersive technology that seamlessly engages customers at every touch point. 
And that's why we created Dynamics 365 for retail, a true end-to-end -end retail solution delivering unified commerce across all channels and encompassing sales, mobility, analytics, productivity, and enabling retailers and workers to do and achieve more in a mobile-first, cloud-first way. Now, I'll turn things over to Mohammed Alam, who's going to share details on Microsoft's vision and approach to these challenges and complexities, and illustrate how we deliver capabilities, technologies, and solutions that drive intelligent retail. Thank you, Bill. I'm excited here to talk to you about our Dynamics 365 for Retail offering. With our retail offering, we believe we've got something that's extremely unique um, and high value for our customers in the market. Um, with Dynamics 365 for Retail, one of the things we offer is a completely integrated end-to-end -end offering. End-to-end -end in the sense that you actually get a very robust set of capabilities both for your front office, your retail back office, as well as you get natively integrated capabilities with supply chain management and warehouse management so you can actually manage your full value chain um, within a single application as opposed to having to integrate to multiple applications. Um, outside of the end-to-end -end offering, we also offer centralized management within the retail um, headquarters capabilities where you can define your configurations, your master data, um, and, your, uh, uh, and your configurations in a centralized way and really expose that to all the channels that you service as a retailer as well as make them available for other applications to consume so you have a single management experience as opposed to having to either duplicate the data or have to manage it in multiple places. Our Dynamics 365 for retail offering also offers modern store and omni-channel capabilities. Um, omni-channel capabilities in the sense that you get an out-of-the-box call center um, channel, you get obviously multiple options from a POS perspective, be it our modern POS or our cloud POS option, which uh, we'll kind of look at a little bit later, as well as to our commerce runtime um, integration capability. You can bring in as many additional channels as you like, but still connect it to the same um, retail set of configurations and data um, that powers your channels um, within the Dynamics 365 for retail solution. The retail solution, we, as Microsoft, also offer multiple deployment options, so you as a customer can choose what makes sense for you. We obviously have a very viable cloud offering. Um, we also announced earlier this year that we will be providing an on-prem offering for our Dynamics 365 for retail solution that will come later this year. But beyond that, for customers that actually want to have a cloud experience for retail but worried about the connectivity at the store, or at least the reliance on the connectivity of the store in case it goes down, we actually also offer very robust offline POS offline capabilities such that in case you have a disconnected experience or a connectivity challenge at the store, your store can continue to operate. And when the connectivity comes back up, um, you can kind of sync in the transactions um, with the cloud solution. These three offerings, we believe from a Microsoft perspective, also makes the Dynamics 365 for retail solution um, very unique in the marketplace. The, the final thing from a, uh, a value proposition perspective that we are really excited about in Dynamics 365 for retail is we provide a solution, a cloud solution, as well as an on-prem later on um, that's managed by Microsoft. However, we're still maintaining the ability and the capability for you as a customer to be able to kind of customize it and extend it and make it personal to fit your business needs in a manner that still allows you to consume the updates and the innovations that we're providing from Microsoft without having to conflict with any extensions that you've done. So essentially, being able to stay current and updated um, while uh, making the application specific to your business processes and your business needs. So while we spend a lot of time um, thinking about how do we make this retail offering unique from a product perspective to our customers, we've spent an equal amount of time thinking through the challenges that retailers face in deploying a new solution, because it's not necessarily either a low cost, um, low duration, or easy effort for retailers to go through to change out their application. Some of the typical challenges that retailers face is long implementation cycles. In some cases, needing to change out whole sort of sets of application at the same time, as opposed to having to kind of do it at a pace that makes sense um, for your business. And in some cases, either needing to integrate it to multiple applications or needing to integrate it to applications that necessarily don't really work work well together um, from an integration standpoint or from a compatibility perspective. We've also solved for, I talked about it a little bit earlier, the ability and the flexibility, the challenges that, that customers face is they 
while they can get the solution and the application um, from a SaaS provider or from a business application provider, typically there's still an extra last mile that you need to kind of go through to make that application fit to your business and unique needs. And that requires, in most cases, significant amount of customizations that you as a customer then need to maintain and continue to upgrade if you want to continue to take on innovations that the provider, that the software provider or the SaaS solution provider um, is um, providing you in the solution. So we've kind of spent a lot of time thinking about how we address those implementation challenges as well with Dynamics 365 for retail, where we do have a simple out of the box, just Dynamics 365 for retail offering um, with a level of pre-configuration that allows you to really get going in your retail operation specifically um, as quickly and, and uh, as seamlessly as possible. That, of course, alongside the second aspect, which allows you to then expand from there and onboard additional business processes, such as warehouse management and supply chain management, if you want to then move the rest of the organization onto the same set of business applications that we provide um, from a Dynamics 365 perspective. We've also spent a, a lot of time thinking about um, in a in a practical world, you're always going to have systems that need to integrate to other applications in your landscape. Um, so we've invested heavily in our Dynamics 365 for retail and Dynamics 365 for finance and operations, and essentially all of our Dynamics 365 applications, allowing you a level of integration flexibility to a lot of other applications that you may have on-prem or online in your IT landscape. So that is something um, you'll get natively um, as part of the product as well. Um, outside of that, as we kind of step into how how do you kind of cover that last mile from an application perspective and make it truly unique and fit to your business needs? We allow a lot of configurability in the application um, so you can kind of make the application yours without actually having to write a, write a single line of code with things such as uh, visual configuration profiles that allows you to adjust the layout and the landscape of what the POS looks like and then assign it to a group of users as well as um, configuration profiles that essentially allows you to define a set of configurations and then assign it to a group of users. Um, hence, kind of have that flexibility without having to kind of hardwire or write code to uh, create that level of specificity for the needs of your business. and then. Of course, all of that on top of the uh, the ceiling and the extensibility we talked about on the on the previous um, slide as well, in which we've kind of sealed the application that we provide from a Microsoft perspective, such that. Um, we can keep it updated and current um, for you so you can take advantage of the investments we're continually making in retail while still adding extensions on top of it to make the application yours or fit your need um, and kind of have the best of both worlds from a um, really um, efficient total cost of ownership perspective. So with that, um, what we're going to walk through today is some of the investments we're making um, in Dynamics 365 for retail in the spring release. And I'm going to have Anil who's one of our uh, principal program managers in retail come up and walk you through some of the uh, demos in the application of the, uh, of the capabilities we talked about. We'll start the journey looking at the unified commerce capabilities, which essentially was the omni-channel set of capabilities we talked about, where we enable you to be able to kind of buy online, um, return in the store, or being able to kind of pick back and ship across different stores. So kind of giving you that flexibility at a store level. From there, we'll move on and look at uh, modern store experiences, modern POSs, and then move on to what we're calling optimized operations that essentially allows you to be able to kind of make the application yours in an extensible and a safe manner, um, allowing you to still optimize your operations to your needs while keeping the application current. Now we're going to move on to the show and tell section of the demo where I'm going to invite Bill um, back onto the stage along with Anil Purushottam, who is our uh, principal program manager, to actually walk you through some of the capabilities we talked about in the application. We're going to start this journey at the Unified Commerce stop where you essentially see um, the ability from a consumer app perspective to be able to kind of transact with the same set of uh, products um, and transactions, um, and then look at how, you, how we enable scenarios like buy online and pick up at store. From there, we're going to move to the modern store experiences, where in the modern store experiences, we'll show you our point of sale system and how you can do pick, pack, and ship and fulfillment across stores. At that point, we're going to shift back onto from front office to the back office. And in the back office side, we'll show you how we do effective merchandising in the sense 
Um, we'll walk you through a scenario where you can set up discounts and um, pricing and promotions and then make that available across channels um, for the channels to consume off of the same centralized management. And from there, we'll look at optimized operations, essentially showing you a scenario where you can make this application specific to your business needs via extensions while still preserving and maintaining the, uh, the core application that we provide from a Microsoft perspective so you can stay current on the innovations and the enhancements we're providing while still having the capabilities that are unique to you as a customer. With that, I'll invite Bill onto the stage to really do the setup for the, uh, for the unified commerce scenario. Joining us now is Anil Purushatam from our retail R&D team, who's gonna walk us through a deep dive of Dynamics 365 for retail. Now, Anil, when I think about intelligent retail, the first thing that comes to mind is unified commerce. So can you start by taking us through how uh, we enable unified commerce within our solution? Surely, Bill. So what we have over here is the that can actually be leveraged by retailers and brand it and frame it based upon their requirement and have it published to the public store like the Apple store or the Android store and have their consumers download it and basically use it in their interaction with the retailer. In this scenario over here, we have got Adriana who has the app downloaded onto her device. And then she can use the app to basically browse and, and kind of look at the products that's available from the retailer. Now, as Adriana is looking at the products, uh, in, in the in the using the consumer app, she basically finds that there are specific recommendations for her based upon her past purchases as well as what's available on her wish list. Now she can basically navigate through the entire category of products similar to what the online experience would be if she were to go to the online website. Using the app, she can have all those experiences uh, uh, over here as well. Now in this example over here, Adriana is browsing through the products and she's looking at the women's wear category of products. And as she's looking at the women's wear category of products, she finds certain dresses out there which basically uh, she's interested in, but she's not very sure about making the purchase right now. So she basically finds the details of the products in terms of pricing, in terms of the attributes of the product. And because she's not so sure about making the purchase right now without touching and filling the product, she decides to add the product to her wish list by adding it to her favorites. When she does that, the product gets added to a wish list. Similar to a wish list, uh, there can be additional lists maintained in the app, like for example, the, the registries or, or any other shopping list that she needs to maintain over here. Now, once she adds the product to the wish list, she can basically navigate to her wish list and she can basically see all the products that she has chosen as a part of the wish list. Now, when Adriana comes into the store, she basically gets notified about promotions that for the products that's available in her wish list. But very specifically, what you can see is the retailer has actually given her a directed promotion based upon the items in the wish list. So that just because the customer has got a product in the wish list, the retailer does not want to lose the sale. And because of which they can basically send a directed promotion to a specific customer based upon what's available in the wish list. Now, when Adriana opens up the promotion that's been directed for her, she can see that there's a good offer or a good promotion being defined by the retailer. And then she decides to say that, yep, I would like to make this purchase. And then she clicks on the request assistance part of it, which basically would intimate a store associate to basically help her in making the purchase and then have her check out the transaction. So that was really cool, Anil. That's, that's kind of where the magic happens, right? Where we have all of that data from across all the different channels. So we can, as a retailer, basically do a, a targeted promotion to an audience segment of one. Um, we know more than Adriana did. She might have even forgot that she had put that item in her wish list. Um, but we're going to target her and, and pick up a sale that we might otherwise have lost. That's awesome. Great. So as, you, as, you, as we saw earlier, when Adriana walked into the store, she got a directed promotion and then she requested assistance in buying the merchandise. Now, a sales associate would come up to Adriana and then basically look up the customer profile. So they would basically look up Adriana as a customer. And as they're looking at the customer profile, they can basically have additional insights about the customer in terms of the profile information, in terms of the loyalty cards, in terms of the recent purchases, the wish list, as well as recommended products. Now, since Adriana expressed an interest to buy the floral white dress, the sales associate can actually look at the product is in the wish list that she has created. And then he can help basically talk to Adriana about the product in terms of the product attributes and other details, including the pricing information. And then Adriana can have a, can make a much informed decision in, into whether she wants to buy this product or not. In this scenario, Adriana decides to buy the product and then the sales associate basically helps Adriana make the right choice in terms of the size, color, and style for her choice. And then the sales associate can basically add the product to the, to the transaction. 
Uh, now, as Adriana is in the store, she is interested in buying additional products that she finds in the store. The sales associates can basically provide the same experience that's available in online in terms of browsing the different product categories and then helping Adriana choose the right product. So Adriana expressed an interest in a specific code that she saw in the store. So the sales associate can actually bring up the product that Adriana was interested in. In this case, it was the wool button up code. So the sales associate can bring up the product details and talk to the product, talk to the customer in terms of all the different product attributes and specifications for the specific product. Now, before the sales associate can commit to making the sale to the to the to the to Adriana, he wants to ensure that there is a, there is enough inventory available in the store to make that sale. So the sales associate can basically look up the available inventory. And as you can see over here, this view basically presents a multi-dimensional view in terms of the different dimensions the product is available in, in terms of size, color, and style. So Adriana is interested in the brown regular uh, color and style and is looking for a medium size. And as you can see over here, there's not enough merchandise. In fact, there is zero merchandise in the store. Yeah. So Adriana cannot be sold that product right away. But what so can- lose that sale. Not really, no. So what can actually happen over here is the sales associate can basically book a transaction as a, as a customer order in the system so that this particular merchandise can either be available to be shipped to, to Adriana to a specific address, or it can even be available for Adriana to, be, to pick it up from a different retail store. Okay. So in this case, uh, Adriana is interested in, in picking this merchandise in a different store. So the sales associate can say, yes, pick up in a store, and for which I would create a customer order. And then she's going to specify a pickup date in terms of when she wants to go in and pick up the product. And then she picks up the product. Uh, she picks up a date by, on which she wants to receive the product and the product is added to the transaction. Now, similar to how we basically have experiences in terms of browsing products, the same online experience. We also have an experience over here that will basically help Adriana compare different products and then make the right choice. So as Adriana walked into the store, she was also interested in buying some shirts for, for, for her family. And then, but this particular store doesn't have the merchandise. So then store associate can basically look at merchandise that's available across the organization and not just in the retail store and still make that sale to, the, to, to Adriana even though that specific product may not be available in the store. So uh, the sales associate can basically, uh, you know, navigate to changing the catalog that he's looking at and then basically choose products from all catalogs across all the different stores and then help Adriana make the choice in terms of what she's wanting to buy. Now in this example over here, because Adriana was interested in dress shirts, the sales associate can bring up the, all the different uh, available dress shirts that, that we have in the organization and then basically have an experience whereby we can actually do a side-by-side -side comparison of the product and then help Adriana make the right choice by talking to her about the different attributes of the products in a side-by-side -side fashion and so that she can make the right choice in terms of the sale. Very so cool. Adriana is interested in the regular fit dress shirt so she can add that product to the transaction. So she, as we add the product to the transaction, uh, we can also make selection in terms of the size, uh, the style as well as the color if it's applicable. And as you can see, all those products have been basically added to Adriana's cart and then she is ready for checkout. So the sales associate before checking out the customer would add uh, Adriana as a customer to the transaction. So the cart basically has the customer profile on the cart and th this transaction is now ready to be checked out. And as you can see, there are, uh, there are different fulfillment methods. There's a customer carry out, there's a pickup from Houston. And then this particular product, Adriana wants it to be shipped to her brother in a different city. So the sales associate can select this particular product and say ship selected, and then choose what is the shipping method. Uh, choose a shipping method, and if applicable, specify a shipping charge. In this case, it's a free of cost shipping charge, so I'm not gonna specify a shipping charge in there. And then by what date Adriana expects this product to be shipped to her brother. And then she chooses a date over here, and then this particular line is being tagged for ship to a particular delivery address. Now the transaction is ready for checkout. Uh, and as you can see, we have products in over here that has got different fulfillment methods or delivery methods. And as you can see over here, 
The amount that we show over here is not really the complete value of the merchandise. Now that again is a business rule that can be configured to say how much deposit needs to be put in, should be put in by the customer before you can actually accept an order from a customer. In my scenario over here, I have got 10% deposit being set up. So Adriana basically has to pay 10% deposit before this order can be set to a confirmed status. So Adriana decides to pay for the deposit uh, using the cash payment method, and she's gonna pay for the deposit only, and she's not gonna pay for the remaining merchandise. She's gonna pay it only when it's being shipped or when it's being picked up in a different store. So she's gonna pay for the deposit using the cash payment method, and she's gonna pay the complete amount, and then the sales associate can basically collect the cash and then have Adriana check out uh, the transaction. Fantastic. I mean, there's so much flexibility happening here, and what I love the most is, is the cart that we're looking at we couldn't have had this many items in the cart without that you know, inventory matrix, that kind of lookup, and, and really the concept of endless aisles, right? We created a virtual store within our brick and mortar store. We weren't constrained by the square footage available to us in terms of the merchandise we could sell to Adriana. That's right. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and once the order is being, is being placed in the store, now the store associates in different stores, wherever the order has been placed, we will get intimated, will get notified in terms of certain orders being available in the stores for the purposes of fulfillment. So they would get notified about it and they would be able to look at the notification and see what orders they need to process in a given day and accordingly have the order ready so that when the customer comes in, the order is ready for pickup or if the order needs to be shipped, basically have the order ready in such a way that when the shipper comes over to pick up the merchandise, the whole package is ready to be shipped out. And as you can see over here, I have got this notification pop up over here. Uh, as you click on the notification, you would basically see there are different uh, you know, actions for the store. There are a few orders that needs to be picked up for customers that are, that are gonna come to the store for pickup. There are a few orders that needs to be shipped to the customer's delivery address. So in this example, I will look at all the orders that needs to be picked up to, to meet different customer needs. And as you can see over here, all these different orders and order lines are basically you know, are available for a customer to walk in and pick up. So let's say this particular customer is, in this case over here, this particular customer, uh, Karen Berg is coming in to pick up a particular merchandise. So the sales associate can basically select that particular product and say, I will have it picked up and I will do all my picking process to have it ready for Karen Berg to come in and pick up the particular product. So when Karen Berg comes in, basically the order is available for pickup and the store associate can basically hit the pickup button over here and the product would get added to the cart and then Karen Berg can actually, you know, kind of pay for the remaining amount that's due on the order and then carry the product with him. So in this case, the, there's a balance of $40 or dollars that Karen Berg has to pay to pick up the product that's been available for pickup and then she pays that using the cash payment method and then the transaction is kind of committed. So the next thing I would think about as a retailer would be uh, merchandise management. Uh, now, Neil, we've got a robust set of um, capabilities in the product for product price and promotion management. So can you take us through some of those? Sure. So what you're looking at is basically the Retail HQ. Now the Retail HQ is a component from where basically you maintain all aspects of the retail solution in terms of assortment management, catalog management, defining prices and promotions, defining the different retail stores, defining the different retail channels. So this is basically the one kind of hub from which you can basically manage all your different retail channels. And as you can see over here, uh, there are different uh, workspaces that we light up as a part of the Retail HQ. And there are workspaces that are tailor-made for the retail personas that we have. For example, if you look at the pricing and discount account management workspace over here. Now this is basically targeted towards the merchandisers who are responsible for the pricing and promotions in the store. So this one single workspace basically ties up all the different activities and all the different insights that they, they need to have as a part of the day-to-day -day work per se. So if you look at over here, they can basically have a look at all the active discounts that's currently running in the different channels. They can look at discounts that are pending, which are basically a work in process at this point of time. And they also get insights using this tiles over here in terms of how, what are the discounts that are expiring in the, in the next few days, the next few months, for example, so that they can basically be prepared to say that what do you substitute those discounts and promotions with. Uh, what you also can do over here is basically have Power BI embedded as a part of the workspace. So all the different charts and graphs that you would create in Power BI can be embedded on the retail workspaces 
and for specific personas so that when they come in, they basically get all the insights that you would have to have, that you would normally would get, but going to the Power BI app per se. Okay. So in this case over here, the user doesn't have to navigate between different applications. They can basically leverage all the power of Power BI from within the workspace that's been configured for their specific persona. Now, continuing the story over here, now as a merchandising person, I might be interested to create a new promotion per se. So I can actually use a workspace as a landing page and go about creating new promotions for specific channels right from over here. For example, I'm going to create a discount for my loyalty customers. So I can give a, give a promotion over here called as loyalty customer promotions. And as I'm defining this, this promotions, I can basically specify what price groups it's applicable for. Now, price groups are nothing but basically a collection of customers or a collection of entities to whom you want to target this promotion for. It could be a collection of customers. It could also be a collection of stores or channels to which this particular promotion is targeted for. Now, in this example over here, because I'm targeting or creating a promotion for my loyalty customers, I'm going to choose this group over here called as Fabricam Loyalty Price Group. And this is the group to which this particular promotion would be targeted for. So after defining the target segment for which this particular promotion is for, I can define what products and what variants basically are qualified to be a part of the promotion. And when you do that, you can actually define that specific products or category at different levels of granularity. You can define it for a specific category of products. For example, if I'm running a promotion for all my fashion accessories, I can navigate to the fashion accessory group over here and then add that entire category of products to this particular promotion. But if you want to restrict the promotion to a specific product or variant, I can do that as well by choosing the, the specific product or variant over here and then having directed targeted promotion for that specific group of customers only for this specific product or variant. So as you can see over here, we've got flexibility in terms of the different kinds of promotions that you can create, the different kinds of target audience and target entities to whom the promotion can be directed towards, and also what products and variants and categories actually be a part of this promotion. And as you can see over here, uh, when you're trying to create a, a, a discount, there are multiple types of discounts that you can create over here. For example, you can create discounts like mix and match discount, you can create quantity discount, you can have threshold based discounts, or you can even have simple discount. So there are different kinds of promotions and discounts that you can actually configure using the Retail HQ. Fantastic. I mean, I can see how powerful uh, the merchandise management is in Dynamics 365 for retail. I can basically configure the system to do whatever I want to manage my, my business needs and how I want to run the business. What I love too is with the unified interface, you showed me embedded Power BI, uh, the tiles with the workspaces. I can get the benefits of that powerful functionality, but I can also mix and match the user experience to tailor it so that it's easy and intuitive for my staff to use. That's great. Thanks, Anil. And then with regard to operations, we want to help you optimize to reduce fulfillment costs uh, effectively manage inventory and run the business better by using operational and customer insights. We capture a lot of data within Dynamics 365 for retail and across all of the applications that work seamlessly together within the Dynamics 365 family, giving you a lot of signal to analyze to help optimize those operations. So, Underlying all of this, right, is a, a foundation, a, a, an application platform that is flexible in terms of its deployment options and its uh, extensibility. There's an underlying common data service that supports all of this. So, Anil, can you take us through some of how that works? Sure. So, we have a pretty flexible and pretty robust uh, extensibility story across the stack. So if you look at the different components that we have in the application in terms of the back office client, in terms of the commerce runtime, in terms of the commerce data exchange, the POS client, we basically have extensibility patterns across all those different components of the application. A case in point over here, now if you look at this particular scenario, where we basically have a customer uh, who is a retail customer, but then all the retail cases in terms of the customer experience scenarios are basically handled in a different application per se. Now, how do you actually leverage the power of common data services to bridge the divide between these two different applications and have a unified experience for the store associate? So in this example over here, we have a customer over here called as Karen Berg. And if the store associate basically wants to look at all the available 
cases that are pending for this particular customer, the store associate can basically select the particular customer and then open up this particular Power App. Now, Power App is basically an application that is not native to the Empower's client, but it can be used by a citizen developer to actually do up a Power App and then deploy that in the same Empower's client per se. So the store associate doesn't have to navigate or jump between different applications to basically kind of look at what's happening with the customer's cases per se. So in this example over here, we have the case management app, which is, which is leveraging the Power App and pulling in data from the common data services and then showing the information in terms of the case information about a particular customer so that the store associate can basically act upon it accordingly. Uh, continuing the story over here, what we also have here is something called as the, the store opening hours. Now, just to demonstrate how the, how the extensibility story goes across the stack, the store opening hours is, is an information that's maintained in the retail HQ. Now, how is that information actually surfaced in the MPOS client? So we have got an extensibility story in the HQ. We've got an extensibility story in the commerce runtime and the commerce data exchange. And using all of that pipe across the stack, uh, you can basically look at information that's been captured in the HQ in the POS client over here. And this is an example of all the information that has been captured in terms of store operating hours that's been defined in the HQ, kind of lights up in the POS client using the extensibility mechanism across all those different components through the stack. And then customers can and partners can actually extend this for additional scenarios using the same extensibility patterns. That's terrific. And, and the thing that resonated the most for me when you were showing Power Apps, you used the term citizen developer, right? And a citizen developer, to me, that's, that's someone like me. I don't know how to write code. But yet Microsoft uh, and Dynamics 365 are providing the tools that I can use to configure the business and tailor it to what I need to do without having to uh, call on IT and introduce you know, new levels of cost and complexity. Right? That's right. So that's all that's been designed in from the start in, in our approach to how we're building Dynamics 365 for retail. That's right. Thank you so much, Anil. That was very cool. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to cover was GDPR, or uh, the General Data Protection Requirement, uh, and compliance. Microsoft is committed to being a partner to our customers in their GDPR journey. And Dynamics 365 for Retail is designed to help you meet your GDPR obligations. You can use Compliance Manager, which is a cross-Microsoft cloud services solution designed to help organizations meet complex compliance obligations like the GDPR, to understand the customer managed controls for Dynamics 365 for Retail and what you can do to help meet your GDPR requirements. Thanks for taking the time to join us for that deep dive into Dynamics 365 for Retail and looking at some of the exciting features and capabilities the product has to offer. Now, I'd encourage you all to visit the Dynamics 365 website to learn more and take a trial. Sign up. Get your hands on and explore the product for yourself. There's a lot to see and learn. Thanks. Mm -hmm.